three, two, one, live. There we go. Got it right on the button. All right. No timer today. No countdown timer. Just the raw Ernie. How you doing, friends? This is Ernie with the Zero Days to Expiration podcast. This is podcast number 75. I love round numbers. We're only 25 away from the centennial. And we do three podcasts a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And those are zero DTE days. Zero days to expiration. We trade the very last day of expiration of options on the S&P. Whether it's the SPX or the E-mini futures. Occasionally the SPY. I don't really get into the SPY. There's no reason to trade the SPY if you have the SPX. And that's what we do. We take advantage of premium collection and the exponential decay of premium on that very last day, right down to the waning moments. It gives us an edge, a significant edge. And then we add to that other analytical methods using volume profile, for example, and, dis and our own personal discretion and our experience our swag. That's right. We use swag. Swag is an acronym for scientific wild ass guess. Now that might sound like, you know, willy nilly. What in the world are they doing? Why aren't they systematic traders? Why aren't they following a set of rules? Lockstep with every tick. Well, just because one is a discretionary trader and using their own swag does not mean that they do not follow rules. It does not mean that they do not have a specific discipline. In fact, we do. We have a very regimented discipline. When it comes to the actual determination of go, no go, part of that is experience. Part of it is based on criteria that we have developed that we have run through, that we have iterated through. We use a continuous improvement process that we review every week. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Where can we improve? And we hope that over time, that iterative process will make us better traders, that we will codify in our own minds what is the best decision. And the reason why we act this way is because for one basic and very undeniable truth, and that is that the market is unknowable. Who can claim that they can create based on back-tested data, things that happened in the past, that they can use all of that and do scientific calculations and statistical analysis and say that based on what happened in the past, we can predict exactly what's going to happen in the future. You cannot. It doesn't work. They can get pretty good. Some systematic traders and strategies are quite good. They require the assistance of a computer for most part. I mean, trying to take a black box alert and then apply some systemized way of approaching or, or entering the market with that alert also is not truly a systematic approach. A true systematic approach would be 100% computer. You program it, you give it all its parameters, you set it, and you let it go. It will open the trade, it will manage the trade, it will close the trade. That is very different from someone who takes a black box where the computer may generate all of the initial information, has done all the calculations, and then provide you with an alert or a setup, which you then have to execute. Now, of course, nobody executes like a computer. So there's a level of discretion. Of course, it's less than what we're talking about. So you might think that, well, doing it the computer way is probably the better way, right? 
you would you would think that that by using all the power that we have bestowed upon us in our iPhone, <laughs> which now has the power of a brainiac computer, literally has the power of a massive computer that would have taken up, you know, a good portion of a room, not more than say twenty years ago. Shouldn't that be able to bring us to trading nirvana? You would think so. But it doesn't. Because if it did, then everybody would have their own algorithms and they would be running it and people would be making money left and right and we wouldn't have these statistics that say that 90% of traders lose money. Instead, we would have all winners. And you can't have all winners. Of course not. But even in the institutions where you have both systematic traders, computer-generated algorithms, and also discretionary traders, they work side by side. And the institutions see value in both of those approaches. And in fact, there have been studies that have shown that when you compare the systematic approach versus the discretionary pro approach in a professional setting, that the discretionary approach actually wins out by a little bit. That's true. That is absolutely true. But how can that be? How can the human brain do better than the brainiac computer? Well, the fact is that no computer can match the complexity and sophistication of the brain. I guess it really depends on who's in control of that brain. But let, you know, let's take a look at um, what this topic is about, the swag, and then we'll get into a little bit about how we approach the trading day and make a decision. You know, where did the term swag come from? Like many other things that have these acronyms, you know, they were derived from military use. And, and in fact, I think that this can be traced back probably uh, to the Vietnam War, war when uh, General William Westmoreland used it when talking to the press and describing or answering their questions on why their, uh, their offenses or whatever they were doing may have been less than um, accurate or, or successful, or if they were successful. And uh, then it was used in, uh, of course, in um, a little bit later on in another military engagement. Now, Vietnam War was obviously back in the 70s, 60s and 70s. And, and then later on, it was brought up in a court case with General Westmoreland. And then later after that, in a NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, it was used in a description of how they made their decisions in, in the bombing raid. Um, so, okay, trading, is trading like going to war? Well, it kind of is. I mean, you are creating a campaign and you have evaluated the theater. You have come up with a strategy, a, a plan of attack, a way to manage your risks and get out alive, hopefully, with a gain. So in every way, trading is somewhat like a war, and you can apply any kind of heuristics that you want. They can be systematic or they can be discretionary. The discretionary part, as I said, is viable. I mean, not all of us have access to the kind of um, sophisticated, front-running um, arbitrage algorithms that they use in high-frequency trading. Nor do we have access to trading bots. You know, most of these trading bots are just scams anyways. So the vast majority of people that trade are discretionary traders, and so are we. And we, we bring... Uh, a great deal of experience. We base our trading on sound philosophies that are clearly articulated in things like Nassim Taleb's The Black Swan or 
skin in the game, anti-fragile systems that gain from disorder. We hold those philosophical ideas very closely and we mimic them in how we approach the markets. Our main goal is to create asymmetric opportunities. So this, um, if, if you go back to, and I've mentioned this before, you go back to the, um, uh, the movie The Big Short, which outlines some trader's realization or discovery of some asymmetric opportunities in the 2008 housing crisis, where they took small bets and made huge money. Asymmetry is, is at the center of what we do. So our purpose is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to the best of our ability use our analysis and we do this with this kind of heuristic, this swag heuristic where we look at some technicals, we look at um, macro conditions, geometric macro political conditions, economic reports, and we develop a bias on which way the uh, the market is moving. You know, is it bullish? Is it bearish? Is it neutral? How bullish? You know, it's kind of a, a vector, right? But it's our own personal vector that's in our head. You know, we don't put a particular velocity on, on what we think price is doing. You know, it's not going 23.4 miles per hour, you know, to the west, northwest, Right. We just say that, yeah, it looks pretty bullish today. It looks like, well, the expected move is 40 points today, or today it's 90 points, or today it's anemic, it's only 15 points. From that, we can develop what we think is the potential range for price. Is it going to move to this level or that level? But moving to one level or another level isn't as simple as just looking at the price and as if it's a ruler. It has dimension. The market has dimension. It has structure. And we develop that structure. We get an idea of what that structure is by analyzing the volume profile. It literally, it literally provides us a theater of operation, a landscape, much like a plain and mountainous landscape where volume will definitively define as that's, that's kind of from the redundant or the Department of Redundancy Department. Definitively, definitively define. Let's see. I got to th rethink that. So we use volume profile to look at the landscape of the market. And if price is going to go across that, we want to know, are we going across the plains, which are what we call volume wells or the absence of volume, where price tends to trend? where impulsive moves tend to move very quickly, uh, where there has been very little trading, and then areas where it has consolidated before, price tends to gravitate towards those areas. So there's, there's a behavior that price goes through. So we do this analysis, and we take all of this information, we put it together, plus our ideas on asymmetry and... Um, the edge that we have in terms of premium collection, and we want to set a trap. We want to set a trap for price. We don't know where it's going to end up, but we have an idea. The market structure tells us, you know, where are the, I guess, the delay points, the checkpoints, so to speak, where price may hang out for a while. And we make an educated guess, a swag, about where we think price will go and hang out for a while, and if it's going to be there, then we're going to set that volume, uh, that, um, that premium collection trap. And our primary tool for doing that is a butterfly, a butterfly trade, where we use two short strikes and two long strikes. And we encapsulate that area that where we believe price will get snagged up in its profile. And we hope that it will spend enough time in that area that it will collect enough premium that we can then take that trade off. Now, when we first put on the trade, we're always out of the money. And that's the only way to create that asymmetry. You want to have a, a fairly good idea of where price is going to go, and hopefully it will be far enough away and there will be enough 
volatility in the market to bring you there, to carry you there, and that the market structure will be conducive to that. And by placing this trade far enough away, we can create an asymmetric trade where we take very little risk for potentially a large amount of profit. If we get lucky, really lucky, and we nail that sucker, we nail it right in the middle, and we take it right to the end of the day where all the premium is collected or decayed, then we can get into a trade with a small amount of money and with as much as 10, 15, or even 20 times the risk that we took, we can collect that kind of profit. Now, we don't do that all the time. That happens maybe 10, 15% of the time. We call that pinning the trade, or what we like to say, pinning the tail on the donkey. So we use all these terms, these fun terms, and that's all part of our swag, right? Some people think swag is this sort of cool hip-hop type of thing. No. This is a scientific wild-ass guess. Let me, let me give you a, a definition from Wikipedia, what a swag is. A swag is used to describe an estimate derived from a combination of factors including past experience, general impressions, and heuristic or approximate calculations rather than, rather than an exhaustive search, proof, or rigorous calculation. The swag is an educated guess, but not, it is not regarded as the best or most accurate estimate. The swag is not computed or, pro or proven rigorously, but the proponent asserts his or her own judgment suffices to rationalize the estimate. And it may, in time, be viable to produce a rigorous forecast of increased precision. In other words, the more you do it, the better you get. And we try to um, help us along on that by wrapping everything that we do in a continuous improvement process. That's what we do. So it's kind of a four-step process. We have three events every week. At the end of the week, we perform what we call a retrospective. It's a meeting that we do on Sundays where we review everything that we did. That's the iteration. We enter the week first providing this analysis, this theater analysis. And that's with the volume profile and all the economic reports and the general market condition. Gain a, an idea of a directional bias. How strong is it, and in what direction is it going? And then make our best swag at where we think price will be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and then set the traps. And then from that, we're able to, on average, get a return on the risk that we put up of about 150 to 250%. And then every once in a while, we pin that tail on the donkey, and we can get 800, 1,000, 1,500 percent return. Then, of course, there's always a spectrum in between the, uh, the low end and the high end. But on average, about 150 to 250 percent return, depending on market conditions, what the market's willing to give us. And this is all kind of predicated on the fact that we don't know squat. We don't know what the market's going to do. And it's the same problem that somebody with a systematic uh, trading strategy has. They don't know what the market's going to do either. They can't tell you that their back-tested stuff that essentially has proven to them that they can be masters of the past will also work in the future, also known as curve fitting. If they do that too tightly, if it's too associated with the past, then it will have no real relevance in the future because the future is unique. It's always unique. Some people say, well, the future it doesn't actually repeat itself, or as Mark Twain might say, it rhymes. But I would say that it, it's not even rhyming. It's more like this sort of vague harmonic. It might be similar, but it's not the same. How often do you say that, man, that's never happened before, yet we say this continuously? These things that have never happened before keep on happening. And that's the way it is. So, you know, you can take 
what, you know, the perceived precision of a systematic approach, which can do well, or you do this swag, a discretionary approach, where you use a continuous improvement process where you're constantly and iteratively getting better and better and better at your task, where you have the ability to be much more flexible than the systematic approach, where you can change on the fly based on current conditions on the ground. So that's what we do at Zero DTE. I should say Zero Dash DTE. So if you want to uh, try out our system, it's more than just a strategy. It's not just alerts. It's an educational experience at zero-dte.com slash try. You'll get a four-week trial. We have about 500 traders now in our, in our family here. It's a really robust and vibrant community. It's growing. We're, about, we're just about 10 months old right now. And it's a fantastic, fantastic system, something that you'll learn and that you'll have for the rest of your life. And we are swag masters. That's what we do. Well, thanks a lot. It's Wednesday. We have one more Zero DTE day on Friday. We'll see you then. Peace. windows out of the way got to find that off button it's way the hell up there there we go